what advice would you give to an advisor that's like, man, I need help with all of this stuff, but I'm, it's kind of, it's a very vulnerable, like, because that for somebody to do that job, they have to be like in your inbox and there could be some confidential stuff in there, some intimate stuff. And I, I think that scares a lot of advisors away, but if you were going to give advice to an advisor out there, that's like, man, I think I might need this role, but I'm just kind of scared. And I'm not really sure like how I would start the process. What, what would you share with them? I think the first thing that I think about that I, I think this is so important. Um, like tradition would say that you would think of an executive assistant as like a superiority inferiority relationship. Mm. Do not make it that way at all. This is a partner, so to speak, yeah. that you're bringing into the yeah. most intimate levels of your, of your life. Like, Treat them like that and show them gratitude for the impact that they're having on your life. Like the way that you speak about Brooke is totally, is totally a great example of that, right? It's like, I, it made my marriage better. It made my life better. I could not do what I do without Brooke, right? And just like me, I could not do what I do without Ashley uh, or what Alicia used to do. Ashley is now learning to do. I can't do that stuff without them. Right? Like I, I just can't operate. We we cannot operate at that level um, without some of those roles being taken care of and addressed. So it is not a, it's like a, Hey, you know, whatever I need you to do, you're going to do like Ashley or Alicia or Brooke will take things off your plate and make your life way easier. But think of them as a partner. Don't think of them as a, as an, like an, an assistant Right. And it's like, hey, whatever you need, you're just going to throw stuff at them. Have there be a much more um, level of respect and and make sure that they know the impact that they're having in your in your day to day. But like, tell them, thank you. Um, mm-hmm. Show them the gratitude. Um, I think that that's that's a really, really important part, because if not. They're not going to feel valued. Right. Even though they're having this huge impact on it, if you don't tell them, if you don't show them that, and if you're treating them, you know, um, not treating them that way, they're not going to feel valued. They're not going to love their job. They're not going to like, you know, doing those things or feeling like they're making a difference for you. And they're probably not going to stick around. Right. So, um, so Clayton, I love that advice. Couldn't agree more. Um, the interesting thing we talked about Enneagram earlier, all, it's, it's all, it's like ear, it's eerie almost all of our, what I would call kind of servant leadership sort of roles inside of triad have just attracted Enneagram twos, which so for those unfamiliar, the Enneagram two is a helper. One of their things that powers them up is serving others. And to Clayton's point, one of my biggest resistances to an EA was like feeling like, Hey, step this appointment for me. And by the way, I would never say that Um, a couple of things, words matter. I don't ever refer, or I try not to, I'm sure I've messed this up along the way, but I don't ever refer to Brooke as my executive assistant or my assistant. I say, hey, can you check with Brooke on the team? She helps organize and run the calendar um, and she'll take care of that. So it's never, uh, this person's below me. Uh, Michael Hyatt taught me this on his org chart. Jim, who's a rock star EA, is side by side with him. So it's a C, the reason it's called an executive assistant, it's like a C-suite level. Yeah, it's a, this yeah. is a, this is not an entry level position. This is a they are literally beside you. And back to Clayton talking about a seven. One of the one of the strengths of a seven is we love to get visionary and here's the future and all the cool stuff we could be doing. One of the downsides of a seven is typically we're not great at like follow through and like check the here's the five to do's we need to do. I'm not saying that's every Enneagram seven, but that's pretty standard. And so to have a EA next to you in that meeting and say, hey, action item one, two, three, by the way, I'll empower this team member to do this and that. Um, but it is a side by side and the team needs to view it that way, too, of like, you know, and a lot of times Brooke will kind of hold my place. Uh, you know, if I'm not able to be in a meeting or something, she'll grab the action items and make sure she's feeding those back to me. So I, I couldn't agree more in that back to that servant based leadership. If you're taking tests, Enneagram two sort of personalities. Um, and I always tell Brooke, I'm like, you're just one of the most servant hearted leaders that I know. And she, and she loves that, like that, that powers her up. So, um, it was, was Alicia too, by chance. She's a two. And so is Ashley. Um, they're, they love 
they love to help, um, but they also respond very, very well to gratitude and praise. Like they, they love to help and they love to feel loved in return. Like that's, that's the warm, fuzzy blanket on both sides for them. 